just briefly teach on what God's promises really are and why he gives them to us. Before I start, let's pray. Father, we thank you, I thank you, and I give you all praise. I ask that you would help my mind so that I would think your thoughts and my mouth so that I would declare your truth. And then help us to hear today. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Uh, for some time I've been talking about the law of the heart. How many of y'all have ever seen uh, the, the documentary called The Secret? The Secret. It's a documentary. It's a very, thank you, it's a very watched documentary. It's called The Secret. And what I want you to understand is every principle in the documentary, uh, the world has stolen from the Word of God and basically repackaged it. Did y'all hear what I just said? What did you hear me say? They what? They stolen it. Now, there is a principle that I want you to understand. The reason why Jesus taught in parables is to hide the truth of what he was saying from those who were really disinterested in him being their Lord. Did y'all catch that? The information that Jesus was sharing was designed to help those who are his followers have a leg up in this world. But what has unfortunately happened is the world, with its wisdom, has taken the principles that Jesus was sharing with the people disregarded him as Lord, but taking the principles because the principles will work for whosoever will. And so they have repackaged his teachings with worldly language like the law of attraction. What is the law of attraction? It says you attract things into your life. Well, they're just taking the principle of seed, time, and harvest, which God says in Genesis chapter 8, verse 22, will never cease. In other words, whatever seed you put in the ground, that is what's coming back to you. Say amen. But there's always... You know, the world is always trying to capitalize on what God has said without reverencing and recognizing God as the source. And so what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to expose and show you that the teaching finds its source in Scripture. That's why if you ever do watch The Secret, you'll say, man, that sounds a lot like what you know, we've been being taught and all that other stuff. Well, the reason why is because it's being stolen and repackaged in, in, in a worldly way. And, and what's, so, what's, so, what's so crazy is that the world has grabbed onto it. And yet the information is really for the children of God who seem to ignore it. And we ignore it to our own peril. So I want to I want to take a lid off of this and show you and expose to you this truth, these truths that are here today before us. What God's promises really are. What are they really? What is a promise from God? What is it really? And then why he gives them 
to us? Does anybody already have the answer? Does anybody already have the answer? All right. Well, then I guess I can go forward. How about if I turn on the, the clicker? Amen. Now, please write this statement down because this statement that is on the screen is a principle that is true. Before a thing can ever manifest in the earth realm, it must first be thought of. That seems elementary, but it's so crucial. If you can conceive it, you can achieve it. That's another way of saying what is on the screen. Before a thing can ever manifest in the earth realm, it must first be thought of, then expressed. How many of y'all understand that simple statement? You can't, if you can't think of it, you can never do it, right? It can never become. It's got to be in the mind of somebody somewhere. Does everybody understand that? Okay. So say it with me. Before a thing can ever manifest in the earth realm, it must first be thought of, then express. Now, this truth, we find in the book of Isaiah. Go to Isaiah chapter 14 and turn to verse 24. Now, the statements God makes, we, we, we take the statement and we, we see the principle that the statement is really expressing. So when you read and you see what God is saying, look for the principle behind the statement. Because this is the principle that God is really stating to us in Isaiah 14 and 24. Do you have it? Do you have it? Are you there? I said, are you there? Okay. Isaiah 14, 24. Listen to what it says. The Lord of hosts has sworn, saying, this is what God has decreed, saying, surely as I have thought, so shall it come to pass. What does God do first? He what? He thinks it. And then he says, whatever I think will surely come to pass. So shall it come to pass, and as I have purposed, so shall it stand. Is that saying before a thing can ever exist, before a thing can ever manifest in the earth realm, it must first be thought of? What precedes the action, the thought? God says, whatever I think, it will come to pass. Now, that's a powerful statement, and that means God has to be careful how he thinks. Because if God just decided to think destruction, wide world, worldwide destruction, then that destruction would manifest. So God has to be what? Careful. You remember in Genesis chapter 6 that God looked at the condition of the earth and he saw that the hearts of men were evil continually. And what did God say in response? He says, I will destroy the earth 
And then he said, and then the scripture says, but Noah found grace. And so God brought about the flood to destroy that antediluvial race of people, that pre-flood race of people. Now, listen to me carefully. After the flood, after God dried out everything, God gave a promise. He said, never again will I destroy the earth with flood waters. And then he gave a rainbow as the token of the promise. So whenever you see a rainbow, it should remind you of God's promise. How many of y'all understand that? But listen to me carefully. And then he said this. He said, while the earth remains, the first thing he said is there will be seed, time, and harvest. Now, what that is really telling us is that God has established this principle to always be in operation, always. It is a principle that, that we have to understand transcends just physical seed. How many of y'all understand that? Now, now write this down. Thoughts are expressed through images or words. Words create pictures where in the mind. If I said to you, dog, if you don't understand the word dog, the picture that's in your mind is a picture that is blank or a question mark. Do y'all understand that? If you understand the word dog, and the only way you can understand the word dog is if you've ever seen a dog, because words are reflective of pictures. Do y'all get that? So what do words do to the canvas of the mind? They paint what? They paint pictures. Now listen to me. If the word I use doesn't convey the picture that is in my mind, then we have a lack of communication. Y'all understand that? That's why sometimes when it comes to the Bible, because we don't understand the different words that are being used, it doesn't always paint the picture that God is really trying to convey to us. Okay. Thoughts are expressed through images. How can you know what I'm thinking right now? Look at me, uh, Eugene. What am I thinking right now? Tell me what I'm thinking right now. Why not? Because I haven't expressed what's in my mind. Do you want to know what I'm thinking right now? You need to wake up. <laughs> you look sleepy. Wake up. <laughs> See, I'm messing with you to keep you up. How about that? You'll never know what a person is thinking until they do what? Now, body language isn't always the key to knowing what a person is really thinking. Now, like, for instance, I try to tell certain people, <coughs> Miranda, that your body language tells on you because you are so expressive. Some of us, our body language is a clue. It tells us what we're thinking, whether we're happy, whether we're sad, whether we're disappointed. All of that tells us 
how a person is thinking. But to really know what's in a person's thoughts, they've got to communicate it to you. How many of y'all understand that? Okay, so the whole purpose, and you can write this down. Now remember, what we're really trying to get to, what we're really trying to get to is what God's promises really are and why he gives them to us. Okay? All right? The whole purpose of communication is to transfer the thoughts from one individual to another so they will know something they perhaps did not know. Okay? So the whole purpose of communication is the transferring of thought. Y'all got that? Y'all got that? Write this statement down. God communicates with us. He communicates with us through what? Images. Say images. Or words. Images are what? What is a vision? Visions are images that God is trying to communicate with us to reveal something to us. Sometimes God doesn't use words. He uses visions. He uses dreams. And what are dreams? They are pictures in our mind that God can put together. I'll never forget when I was 12, God, well, the Lord Jesus Christ came to me in an open vision, a daytime vision. Okay, and he came to me and he told me to go tell. Now, I didn't understand what he was saying to me. I didn't understand the significance of me, of his statement. I saw him. He came to me. His presence came to me, and he told me, go tell. Then he turned away from me, and then it faded off to black, okay? But I didn't know how to respond to what God was saying to me. It wasn't until later in life that I began to play back the image that I understood the significance of his statement. How many of y'all understand that? So what does God do? God uses images, and then sometimes he'll use words. Okay? How many of y'all understand that? What is the whole purpose of God doing that, to communicate to us a message. God is trying to tell us something. Well, why is that so important? Why is God trying to communicate something to us? Now, I said on last Sunday, the only thing that God is trying to do or that is act, he is actively engaged in is he's trying to give us his thoughts. That's the thing God is trying to do today. He's trying to give us his thoughts. God ain't trying to do nothing as far as work, but he is trying to give us his what? Thoughts. Now listen to Jeremiah, Jeremiah 29 and 11. For I know the thoughts that I think towards you. Now what did, what did I just say? Unless God expresses those thoughts, you'll never know what God is thinking towards you. And here he says, these are my thoughts towards you. Now what does he say? Thoughts of peace, thoughts of peace, and not of evil. God is never thinking your destruction. And yet, we blame God for destruction. And yet, here he says, these are the thoughts that I think towards you. 
thoughts of peace. Everybody circle the word peace. And write down shalom. It's a Hebrew word. And it is filled with wonderment. It is filled with goodness. L listen to this. If you keep thinking that God is somehow behind your demise or God is trying to get you for something, then you don't know how God is thinking towards you. You have embraced what the enemy who, who, who does something in your life and then hides and points the finger at God and say, God must be mad at you. That's why this destruction happened in your life. And here God says, I know the thoughts that I think towards you, saith the Lord. Let me ask you a question. God says, I am the Lord, I change not. God says, I change not. God says, I never change. This is permanent. Here his thoughts are, he says, thoughts of what? Peace and not evil. I'm glad, he, I'm glad he qualified it. He said, peace and not what? So if destruction comes to you, it's not from God. God never intends for you to suffer destruction. That's not God's, listen, that's not God's thought pattern, not towards us. Say amen. Amen. He says, thoughts of peace. Write this down. The word peace is the Hebrew word shalom. It means wholeness. God doesn't want you broken in any way, shape, form, or fashion. He doesn't want you emotionally crippled. Say amen. He wants you to be whole in every area of your life. Say, say, I have mental issues. That's not God's thoughts about you. God says you don't have to be crazy. Say amen. You can have a whole mind. All you got to do is start thinking God's thoughts about you. He says wholeness. Then he says safety, soundness in body and dwelling. You don't have to be homeless. You don't have to live in an environment that is threatening. Amen. Say amen. amen. Why? Because God says, my thoughts are your safety and your soundness. You don't have to go to sleep with guns firing over your head. You don't have to worry about somebody breaking in over you. Why? Because God is thinking Wholeness, soundness, safety when it comes to you, praise God. Now, what are you doing with those God thoughts? Say amen. Get back to the book, y'all. You don't have to have a lot of scriptures. All you got to do is have something that really speaks to you and then put your hat on it because God is not changing. Say amen. I am the Lord, I change not. God says, I'm not changing. And we don't make God change. Whether we respond to him or not, God is the same. Yesterday, say it with me, today, and what? Forever. He says, God wants you sound in body and dwelling. Hallelujah. Hallelujah that it would be well with you in health and prosperity. Stop praying for prosperity. God has already decreed it. God says, I want you to prosper. Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mightest what? Prosper and be what? In health. Where do we get that concept from? From the word shalom. Because the word shalom is all of these things rolled up into one word. God says shalom to us, peace to us. He says, I want it well. If it's not well with you, it's not God's fault. 
It can be. But we're going to see how it, we can make it become our reality. Say amen. Peace, quietness, tranquility, and commitment or contentment. You know, so many people are so disgusted with their existence. They are so tired of their life. I, I'm sitting on it. I know how to do it. They don't like their life. I mean, let's be honest. Let's be honest. Well, come on, talk to me. How many of y'all like your life? How many of y'all don't like your life that you're living today? Okay, that means everybody likes what they're getting. Okay, well, praise God. But here's my point. There ought to be a, a contentment that you experience Every day you wake up. You know, contentment means fulfillment. I am fulfilled. My life is rewarding. This is what God says he wants for us on a daily basis. This is all wrapped up in the word shalom. Everybody say shalom. He says, I want you to have contentment, peace, quietness, tranquility, if your life is filled with drama, that's not God's will for you. Amen. Amen. Say amen. amen. You are the one who needs to change that. If your life is filled with confusion, if your life is filled with dissatisfaction, if you're not, listen to what I'm saying. These are the words that the scriptures teach us God is thinking towards us. Friendship with God and man. Look up the word shalom in your Bible or in, in your, on your phone. You'll find all these words. God wants you to be at peace with him and with other people. War listen to me, is not God's will. Only when men can't work together does it result in war. It's not the will of God. Say amen. One of the things I realize is that every continent, God has deposited something in it that is a unique signature to that continent. Now, why is that important? Because one continent doesn't have what the other continent has. And the other continent doesn't have what the other continent has. But guess what? All of it, we need to exist. So what God really wanted to happen was for us to learn how to trade, value their resource as they value our resource, Say amen. But here's what wicked men do. Wicked men say, I want what you got, and I'm coming to get it. And they use force and violence to get it. That's never been God's will. Say amen. I, I just want you to understand when there is shalom, when it exists, there is harmony between you and your fellow man. These are the thoughts that God has towards us. Say amen. Now, please pay attention to this statement. Every thought God has expressed concerning our well-being he has given it to us in the form of a promise so that we might know the surety of his word. What does a promise do? It stops the argument. You see, with people, and you can't trust people. Some people you can, but most people you can't. 
there's a Proverbs, that, there's a scripture in Psalms that says, Psalms 54, he that sweareth to his own hurt and will not repent. One of the things that we started out at the old church, the old building, was that I wanted everybody to, to keep their word. And if you say you're going to do something, do it. You remember that, Doc? And so I would say to the people there, if you tell me you're going to see me next Sunday, you better be here. Or you better call me and tell me before next Sunday get here that something has come up. Now, they thought I was playing. And so Sunday would come. They'd say, I'll see you next Sunday. I said, okay, I'll look for you. And then Sunday would come, and they wouldn't be there. And then the next time I would see them, I would say to them, you told me. Now, listen to me. We're not used to this. See, people aren't used to this because they're used to lying. People are used to lying, or they want you to just understand. But that's not what the Bible teaches. The Bible teaches that when you, you speak, when you say, I will this or I will that, that's enough. Jesus said, stop, stop trying to swear over everything. Your word ought to be good enough. Somebody say amen. amen. So here's, here's what I would say. I said, where were you? Well, Oh, oh, oh. I, and then I say, you owe me an apology. You have to ask for my forgiveness because you just lied to me. And the Scripture says, thou shalt not lie. Wait a minute, wait a minute. And the Bible says that if your brother sins against you, you're supposed to go to, see, listen to this. Go to your brother and get it right. Now, everybody wants you, me to understand that you've been lying to me over the years. You know what you continually lying to me over the years does to me? It poisons my heart. And then I start seeing the body with a cynical eye. And then I say, oh, you can't believe him. They just going to say something. Now I'm, I'm reinforcing what Satan wants me to think about God's people. See, that's designed to protect us. Just be truthful. Every thought God has expressed concerning our well-being, he has given it to us in the form of a promise. If you can't be honest and truthful with your own words, you'll never think that God is. Because what you'll say is, well, God ain't no different than me, but he is. See, that, that's the point. When God gives us his word, it is in the form of a promise. Say a promise. So that we might know the surety of his word. Listen to me. If God ever lies, he has sworn that he would cease to exist, that God would destroy himself. This is the surety that we have when it comes to God's word, that there are two immutable things, that God does not lie and that God cannot change. So that we might lay hold with a full assurance on every promise that God has made. I can know that whenever I find a promise in God's Word, that that promise will become my reality. Why? Why does God give us promises? So what is a promise? What is a promise? It is a thought. What? It is a thought. What am I really teaching you? See, I'm really teaching you something sublime 
A promise is really God's expressing his thoughts. It is a thought expressed which carries with it a legal binding declaration that gives the person to whom it is given a right to expect or to claim the performance or forbearance of a specific act. God says, I will never again destroy the earth by flood, by water. I don't care who you are. God put a rainbow in the sky. That promise is for everybody. Say amen. It'll never be destroyed again by water. But here's my point. A promise is just God sharing with you his thoughts. His thought for you. When you give a promise, you are to keep your word. And if you can't keep your word, you've got to go to the person and ask them to release you from the promise. And if they say no, then you have to hold to it. You have to hold fast to it. Now, that's... that's, That's what's called integrity. Say amen. Something that we need to be teaching on. Has anybody ever promised something to you and they didn't come through? Raise your hand if you've experienced that. Okay. Has anybody ever promised something and they did exactly what they promised? How many of y'all always keep your promises? Raise your hand. (laughs) All you got to do is say, I can't give you my word on it. Don't put yourself in the position where you're going to lie. Just tell people the truth. I can't do that. Right? And that way they don't expect for you to do it. And then if you show up and do do it, then praise God. What is a thought? What is a promise? Excuse me. It is a thought expressed which carries with it a legal binding declaration that gives the person to whom it is made a right to expect or to claim the performance or forbearance of a specified act. Has God made promises to us? I can't hear you. Yes. Now, this is important. Why does God make promises? How many of y'all know the answer already? It's real simple. What's the answer? Huh? Hope is good. Give us hope. But there's a better answer. It's good. It's not because he loves us. And yes, it is because he loves us. But here's the only reason. God gives us his promises to change our thoughts. That's it. Well, why is that important? See, I'm showing you something that you, you, you don't get it. You don't get it. Because God ain't going to do it for you. How does it start? Where? Thought where? In your mind. See? What does God give us a promise to do? Change how we think. Because if he can change how we think, then it can change our reality. Because, see, you think when God gives you the promise that God is going to do it. No. He's only giving you the promise so that you will think it. Y'all didn't catch that. See, it still goes back to seed Time, you cannot escape that. So what are thoughts? Say it again. Seeds. That's all they are, y'all. They are seeds that are designed to impregnate your mind. So if you start getting God's seed in your mind, what will change? Everything. 
Because now, instead of you got the seeds of the enemy, Satan growing up inside of you, now you got God's good harvest growing up on the inside of you. It's designed to change your what? Thoughts. Here go God. My thoughts are not your thoughts. God says you already are corrupt. What created the corrupt thinking? The exile out of the garden. And man became bound by what he saw, and what he saw created the thoughts because images create what? Thoughts. The images are out there. They are the picture. So now, outside of the garden, what does man see? A world full of chaos. So what begins to happen on the inside of the man? He becomes chaotic in his thinking. And his mind begins to be filled with chaos. Instead of it being filled with a garden image, outside of the garden, his mind is being inundated with pictures that, that show man at his worst. So, in other words, God doesn't want me to have peace. But the truth is, God always wants you to have peace. I don't care what's going on around you. Say amen. You can't look at what's going on around you because what's going on around you is not necessarily what God has already said concerning you. So, what does God do? God gives you his thoughts through the form of a promise to change your what? thinking because if you change your thinking say amen can I go back to it can I, can I go back to it before a thing can ever manifest in the earth realm it must first be what thought of so God says I know around you is crazy but I'm going to give you some promises that's what you focus in on. And as you focus in on my promises, which are my thoughts, which are seeds, when Jesus said, the sower soweth the word, and then he broke it down. He said in Mark 4, 14, the seed is the word of God. Say it with me. The seed is the word of God. Well, what word? It's his promises. Do y'all understand that? God gives us his promises to change our thoughts. And why is this so important? Because what we think about, we bring about. Say it with me. What we think about, we bring about. What kind of thoughts do you have? Because whatever they are, that's what you bring about. What we think about, we what? So my thoughts are not to be determined by what I see. Because here's the problem. We're not supposed to walk by what? Sight. We're supposed to walk by the promises of God. Say it with me. Walk by the promises of God. So that's what we think about. And what we think about, we bring about. Better stated, Proverbs 23 and 7, as a man thinketh where so he becomes. So what does God do? Here God, all he's trying to do is get you to understand, get my word in you. Amen. That's all God is saying. Get my word. This is my thoughts towards you. Thoughts of peace and not of evil. Get my thoughts in you. Don't tell me God wants you to destruct, to destroy to suffer loss. That's not God's thoughts towards you. God gives you promises. Now, let me say this to you, and then I'll be done. Say amen. Are y'all learning anything? The promises God gives to us are already ours. How many of y'all search or have a book of God's promises? 
If you have a book of God's promises, stand to your feet. I want to see that. I want to see that. I want to literally see. How many of y'all have a book of God's promises? Okay, good, good, good. Okay. Everybody should have stood. Say amen. See, see. <laughs> I communicated a specific thing, but you didn't hear what I communicated because you were thinking something else. How many of y'all got a book of promises? Everybody here. Why? Because you got God's Word. Isn't that something? You got God's Word. Isn't that a book of promises? You see how we can misinterpret the communication process? Well, I didn't say a little book. Because you're not hearing what is being said. Do y'all hear me? The promises God gives to us are already ours. Say they already are. Our job is to discover them in his word. See them as seed. Say the promise is a seed. Which will change any condition that we find ourselves in. Sow the seed. Say sow the seed. The promise in our heart. See, this is what's so hard for us to understand. The natural realm, when it comes to seed, time and harvest is a reflection of what's going on in the realm of the spirit. Yesterday, the Lord said, I want you to go somewhere and I want you to look. So I, I got in my truck and I started driving and I went to an area that there was grass and just stuff all over, right? Right? Thank you. It was just all over, right? Now, pay attention to what I'm saying. Don't worry about me falling. I ain't going to fall. Praise God. Just pay attention. <laughs> At least I ain't going to fall today. Amen. Just pay attention. But there was all kind of, and then I started looking at the different plants that were growing. And I said, here's what God said. Everything that you see in the natural started as a seed. He said, you wouldn't be able to tell me just looking at the seed what it would produce if it was planted because they're so small. And here's the thing. Nobody planted it. The law was working all by itself. And then he said, get up and go somewhere else. And I went up and, and I got up and went somewhere else. And in the field was nothing but corn. He said, that's the difference between somebody that is diligent and somebody who's not. He said, the person who is diligent plants purposefully. He said, the person that is not which is reflective of many of us, just allow whatever seed to blow into their lives. And when seed blow in, guess what? Stuff start growing. Do y'all catch that? So what do we got to do? We got to begin to tear up the ground and begin to plant the promises of God's Word Amen. and then know just like just like God says in his word, as the earth remains, see time and what shall never cease. Now listen to this, and then I'm done. Second Corinthians 1 and 20 says, for all the promises of God in him are yes, and in him amen to the glory of God. Every promise God says yes to because it's his thoughts released. Say amen. 
Say amen. amen. Stop asking the question whether or not this is God's will for you. If you found it and if it's a promise, the answer is what? Yes amen. and amen. You can take that seed and sow it in your heart. Hebrews 6.12, that ye be not lazy, but followers of them who through faith and what? Patience. Inherit the promises. We got to use, we got to release our what? Faith. And we got to be patient. Say amen. And then we will inherit the promise. Say amen. Why? Because every seed has to grow. It takes time. Second Peter chapter 1, verse 4. This is so powerful to me. He says, because of this, and he's talking about the lordship of Jesus and the mercy and the goodness of God. He says, because of this are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises. Say, God's promises are great and God's promises are precious. That by these, these what? These great and precious promises, we might be partakers of the divine condition. Y'all like that word? God has a divine condition for you to be in on a daily basis. A divine condition. Woo! That means God wants you to have it all on a daily basis. No struggling, no straining, just releasing faith. And you don't, you don't, listen, you don't start planning, wait for a harvest, eat your harvest, and then plant. You keep planting the promises. Why? Because they need to grow year-round in you. Say amen. Did y'all learn something today? If you didn't, I'm sorry. I did my best. Close your Bible.